So now let's look at an example of calculating an improper integral of type 1. Okay. So here we have integral from 0 to infinity of x squared e to the minus x. And right. remember, right, this is not a definite integral, so we have to express this as the limit of t going to infinity, right, because we're taking an integral to infinity right, of integral from 0 to t x squared e to the minus x dx. Right. So the first step was to write this integral as a limit. Right. The second step is to evaluate this definite integral, right, the definite integral from 0 to t. Right. And using integration by parts, which I'm not going to do here in detail, right, we get minus t squared minus x squared e to the minus x okay, minus 2x e to the minus x minus 2 e to the minus x from 0 to t. Okay, and here we used integration by parts. Okay. If you're having trouble with this, right, you can go look at the videos on this topic. Right. And so now we've found the antiderivative, so now we just substitute in the bounds. And what we'll get that is of course minus t squared to the minus t minus 2 t e to the minus t minus 2 e to the minus t plus 2. Right. So now it's a matter of calculating the limits. Right, so let's see. Well, 2 e to the minus t. Right, so that term. as t goes to infinity, e to the minus t goes to 0. Right, so that term is OK. Right? This constant 2, nothing is going to happen to that. Right? This t goes to infinity, 2 just stays 2. Right? So that one's OK. But now what about these two terms? Right, this t squared e to the minus t. Now as t goes to infinity, t squared goes to infinity, and e to the minus t goes to 0. And here, as t goes to infinity, well, t goes to infinity, and e to the minus t goes to zero. Okay. Now, you have to be very careful here. That does not mean that their product goes to zero, necessarily. And it does not necessarily mean that their product goes to infinity. Okay. So let's make a little note here. This does not necessarily mean that their product goes to zero or plus infinity. Right? It is not necessarily the case. Right? It may be the case, but not always. Right? So we have to investigate the limits of these two terms more closely. Right? We have t squared e to the minus t and we have t e to the minus t right. so let's see what happens to those terms as t goes to infinity well we have to use Lapital's rule. Right. So, 
Let's see. What happens to the termite marked in red? Lemonis T goes to infinity. T squared e to the minus T. Right, now, we just have to write this in the right form so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's write it as t squared over e to the t. Right, then t squared goes to infinity and e to the t goes to infinity. Right, so we apply L'Hopital's rule. Which means that right, we're going to differentiate the numerator and we're going to differentiate the divisor and we'll take the limit again. Right, so differentiating t squared gives us 2t. And e to the t just says e to the t. Alright, now what happens? Well, as t goes to infinity, 2t goes to infinity, and e to the t goes to infinity. So we have to apply L'Hopital's rule again. Alright, so differentiating. Alright, and this is zero. We have to go do the same thing for the, the, the term t e to the minus t. Right. And I'm not going to do that here and fill on the board. Right. It's going to work exactly the same. Right. Remember t goes to infinity, t e to the minus t is zero. Right. In exactly the same way as we've done it for t squared e to the t. The test, you should of course do all the calculations in full. Okay, so, what do we know? Well, we know that this term goes to zero, t squared e to the minus t, t e to the minus t goes to zero, 2 e to the minus t goes to zero, and 2 just has 2. So, i is equal to 2. Integral is convergent. Right. So let's quickly let, look over this and see where are the points we have to watch out for. Well, first we have to remember we have to express this as an integral. Uh, so this integral as a limit. And if you don't do that you'll get very little marks in a test right? because with the calculations you're doing aren't valid. Right? By definition, this integral is a limit. Right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is finding the antiderivative. Right? Typically, we, those won't be extremely difficult, right? but you should be able to apply the integration techniques we've learned in the first semester to find these antiderivatives right? and calculating the definite integral. Right? And then, in the final step, Right, where you take limit as t goes to infinity of this answer, your definite integral. Right, you have to be very careful. Right, when you have things like infinity times zero, infinity minus infinity, infinity over infinity, right, or zero over zero, right, you have to be careful. Right, you have to use the Pitol's rule to calculate those limits. Right. So we'll look at some more examples, and uh, hopefully by the end of it, you'll have the hang of this.